On the 1st of January 2022, Celtic announced the triple signing of Yusuke Idiguchi, Ryo Hatate, and Dazen Maeda. Idiguchi and Hatate were both handed four and a half year deals, whilst Maeda arrived on loan from Yokohama F. Marinos, with his move becoming permanent this summer. Manager Angie Postacoglu, who had seen each of them firsthand during his three year stint in Japan, hailed the signing, saying the boys had landed three players at the peak of their careers who would excite our fans. With Hatate and Maeda 24 and Idiguchi just a year older, they had the perfect age profile to carry out Postacoglu's high intensity progressive football that has so impressed observers so far this season. But why have Celtic looked to sign Japanese players? What will they bring to the club on and off the pitch? And what does it say about Postacoglu's position within the club? Welcome back to EFD Explained, this is why Celtic are raiding Japanese football. Almost a year ago to the day, we at Eurofootball Daily released a video entitled What's Gone Wrong at Celtic? which laid out the reasons behind the boys' embarrassing start to the 2021 season, which included breaches of COVID protocols, analysed Neil Lennon's sterile football, and Rangers' unassailable lead at the top of the Scottish Premiership, and a season they eventually went unbeaten. Fast forward to the end of January 2022, and the situation at Celtic Park is far rosier. After a protracted and ultimately unsuccessful pursuit of Eddie Howe during the summer, the club appointed Australian Angie Postacoglu a manager with a CV which included stints in the country of his birth Greece, Japan and with the Australian national team, a decision that has thus far proven to be a masterstroke. Postacoglu arrived into a challenging situation. He wasn't first choice, long-term chief executive Peter Lawwell would be replaced by Dominic Mackay, only for him to last just two months, head of football operations Nick Hammond stepped down and long-term captain Scott Brown had left for Aberdeen. Given the circumstances to find themselves second at the time of writing, just four points behind Champions Rangers after 21 league games is a solid start. They might have only garnered one more point than at this stage in 2021, but given the chaos of the summer and their scattergun recruitment strategy, which according to the Athletics Kieran Devlin included, a hodgepodge of Postacoglu signings, names from Nick Hammond's Bright Young Thing shortlist, Liam Shaw and Ozaza Yurikide, signings engineered between board members and agents, Lee Labada and James McCarthy, and those spotted and shortlisted by the scouting department for months or even years, Felipe Jota or Cameron Carter-Vickers. The raw results are there, with Celtic currently on a 15-match unbeaten run, with their 39 points in that time level with Rangers, and the underlying numbers further illuminate that improvement. Their goals per game have stayed at a solid 2.1, but their goals against the game have dropped from 0.8 to 0.6, helped by the fact they now concede just 6.7 shots per game, just 0.1 more than Rangers, and down from 8.5 last term. They were also increasingly easy on the eye, averaging over 71% possession, not only 8% more than Rangers, but 4% more than the best in Europe's top five leagues, Man City. Their 88% pass success rate is only topped by four sides in Europe's top five leagues, PSG, Man City, Marseille and Real Madrid. Postacoglu has not only turned new signings Carter Vickers and Jota into fan favourites, but improved current playing personnel, with Callum McGregor playing his best football in years, Tom Rodgick rejuvenated in midfield, and Anthony Ralston going from lost soul to key first team player. That is all well and good, but trophies are what really matters to a club of the magnitude of Celtic, winners of 51 league titles. But Postacoglu already has one of those in his locker too, having secured the Scottish League Cup with a 2-1 victory over Hibs in mid-December. What was most satisfying about that was the fact that both goals were scored by Japanese sensation Kyogo Furuhashi, a player Postacoglu brought to the club. The 27-year-old striker arrived at Celtic in July as the then top scorer in the J-League, with 14 goals in 20 games for Vissel Kobe. To say he has hit the ground running would be an understatement. With his 16 goals in 26 games, six more than next best Lille Labada at the time of writing, already making him a cult hero. So it's clear why Postacoglu has been backed in the market. He's improved players, raised standards, and his J-League signing from last summer has been sensational. But are the players good enough to match Furuhashi's impact? There is often a patronising element to coverage of transfers from outside of Europe. But make no mistake about it, the J-League is a very strong standard. It was Arsene Wenger, a J-League export of sorts, who said in 2013, I find that a new market that is very interesting and very competitive is the Japanese market. Look at the number of Japanese players who now play in Germany, for example. At that time, Shinji Kagawa had earned a move to Man United after two excellent seasons with Borussia Dortmund, whilst players including Takashi Inoue and Makoto Asebi were representing Frankfurt and Wolfsburg respectively. We have seen that trend continue in Germany with Deiji Kamada and Wataru Endo receiving rave reviews for their performances for Frankfurt and Stuttgart respectively. 
whilst Tomiyasu and Minamino have both continued to fly the flag in the Premier League after the departures of Okazaki and Yoshida. Celtic, of course, are no stranger to not only buying Japanese players, with Shunshuki Nakamura providing countless unforgettable moments in the mid noughties but continuing to shop in interesting places. Buying players from Portugal, Israel, Poland, Russia and Holland in the summer of 2021 alone, as they look to continue developing underappreciated talent before turning them over for profit. But what can we tell you about these three players specifically? Well, firstly, there is very little risk given they cost a combined £3.5 million, which The Guardian claim is another example of J-League clubs only being too happy to virtually stand aside and wave their best players through to Europe. What's clear is that they certainly fall into this category. Hatate, whose father was a professional baseball player, has played two years of professional football with Kawasaki Frontale, won the league on both occasions, was named in the J-League Team of the Year and represented Japan at the Olympics, where they beat teams including France and Mexico, only to lose to eventual silver medalist Spain in the semi-finals. Maeda, meanwhile, finished as the J-League top scorer in 2021, whilst defensive midfielder Udaguchi recovered from an underwhelming spell with Leeds as a 21-year-old, in which he didn't make an appearance to become a regular for Japan. It didn't take long for them to show the hoops faith for what they're all about. On the 17th of January, Celtic took on former player Sean Maloney's Hibs, and just four minutes into the game, Maeda scored with virtually his first touch. It was central midfielder Hatate that made the biggest impact, though. The Athletics' Michael Walker explained, there is a place on any football pitch and in every fan's heart for a midfielder who plays the ball forward instantly, who sees the game quicker than the rest, who rejects the sideways pass, takes the difficult route and makes it. In his 75 minutes on the pitch before being replaced by Udaguchi, Hatate did just that, creating three chances, the joint most, with his crisp passing and relentless energy yielding the Man of the Match award. When asked afterwards about comparisons to the legendary Nakamura, Postacoglu had the perfect response. No, he's Rio Hatate mate. The message was clear, these players wouldn't have been signed unless they could make a difference on the pitch. But off it, there are clear upsides too. We would be naive to suggest there aren't cultural benefits to signing players from Japan. Already working with Ganassa, a Tokyo-based digital marketing agency since last summer, whose clients include Man City, Juventus and Dortmund, as well as governing bodies such as FIFA, La Liga and the Bundesliga, Celtic have been working to ensure their club and by extension brand is taking advantage of their new standing in East Asia. According to The Athletic during Mackay's brief and fraught time as chief executive, he outlined ambitions to grow Celtic's brand in Australia and Japan. The partnership with Ganassa, which has editorial teams in China, South Korea, Thailand, Vietnam and Indonesia, and an understanding that there is not just one nebulous Asian market was crucial. According to a 2013 study, only 10% of Japanese citizens classify themselves as conversationally fluent in English, so communicating in their native tongue is essential. As Ganassa CEO Cesare Palenghi explains, your 3pm kickoffs are midnight here, your 8pms are 5am, so having an active social media community is essential. Celtic set up a Japanese Twitter page in the summer, and they already have over 45,000 followers, having grown by 10,000 alone since the trio of signings were announced on New Year's Day. Whilst 45,000 followers might sound meagre compared to the huge followings of English language accounts of top European clubs, 45,000 is already more than PSG's Japanese account, who boast stars like Messi, Neymar and Mbappe on their books. They also introduced a Japanese language online store, after a survey conducted by Ganassa showed that 6 in 7 people would buy more merchandise if the store was in Japanese. This is essential with Japanese fans very willing to buy merchandise according to Palengi. In Europe, it is common for fans to complain about the ever-growing commercialization of football, whilst in Japan with many fans unable to show their support by attending games, wearing the club's colours is an obvious sign of loyalty and affection. Whilst Ganassa and Celtic's partnership is relatively new, it's obvious that Celtic want to capture the excitement and interest generated by their growing horde of Japanese players. If their new stars continue to excel on the pitch, Japanese players will no doubt become even more common all across Europe. With the Samurai Blue having qualified top of Group F in the AFC's World Cup qualification, winning 8 out of 8, scoring 46 goals and conceding just 2, Celtic are clearly taking advantage of a footballing nation on the rise. Having appointed Postacoglu almost by accident, their short and hopefully long-term future will likely be shaped by the success of these signings. Good luck to them! So guys, that was our explained on why Celtic are raiding Japanese football. What did you guys think of it and what do you want to see us cover next on this strand? Let me know in the comments down below. If you've enjoyed it, please do smash that like button. It really does help us with the algorithm and I'll catch you next time.